We're here at the Sporlin booth. We're here with Matt Wood. And I wanted to discuss some of the new stuff that they're doing with some of the CO2 valves that they, they currently have in production. Absolutely. So these are which valves? So you have your gas cooler valve and your flash gas bypass valve here. Okay. So, you know, these products have been around for us. We launched them close to five years ago. The European market really transitioned ahead of what the U.S. is seeing. But now that we see, you know, I don't know, I'm going to just throw out maybe 50% of the market. You see a lot of the market going to CO2 right now, and we definitely see the demand for these products, you know, going up. These would be transcritical CO2 systems, which are obviously, uh, as you're familiar with, uh, the majority of what we're seeing installed. Places like California are just, that's all they're doing is transcritical. Yeah, absolutely. And unfortunately, there are a lot of manufacturers that, you know, they have the market cornered as far as valves. So it's nice to actually have a change out for the valves that are typically in there. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the valves, uh, step rates, how you guys are controlling them? Are you controlling them externally? So these products, we have a 2500 step step rate on these valves. Mm -hmm. We offer a valve positioner, okay. so we would rely on you know the brain that would be provided by the larger control system uh, to do the uh, uh, algorithm for control of the valve. Um, we. We, you know, we've, we've worked on this, and we do have our microthermal product line yeah. that that we can work with this. But obviously, you know, anybody that's got an algorithm to control this, it's a stepper motor, and it is fairly simple as long as you can interface with it and you have your algorithm. So basically, this controller right here is getting a signal, whether it be a zero to ten, four to twenty, in order to tell these valves exactly what to do at that point in time. So a controller that looks a lot like this would be. Okay. This is one of our MT controllers, so this is not actually our our controller this is an mt784 but you'd be looking at a psd4 is what it's called that's oh, is, the product we offer is that the little little board that's about yay big yeah it's pretty small and, and so that that product uh yes it takes in that that signal and turns it into a stepper motor signal okay so if you guys aren't familiar um you know there there are a lot of uh, valves that have different steps and so basically uh Sporlin has a barrage of different controllers that basically take that zero to ten signal and you don't have to be zero to ten where it's zero empty and 100 100 percent at 10 volts you can actually switch it they are configurable um they also do make another board which i actually did carry on my truck has a safety so you know i didn't know what valve driver was going to go bad at that point so what i ended up doing was have this valve driver that can take that zero to ten signal and basically control a 63 six step valve control a 2500 step valve and that way i'm not out of the woods if, if god forbid something would happen right and it's got the dip switches on it so you just select what number of steps is mm -hmm. for the valve absolutely. absolutely so if you guys notice on these valves um these are welded valves because typically these are going to be on the transcritical section of, of the system so you're talking anywhere from 800 pounds all the way upwards of 13 14 1500 pounds so we have to be able to make sure that we can weld that that solid stainless steel pipe on there um this is as well i mean typically this valve if this is the flash uh, flash gas regulator switched up okay flash gas regulator is typically uh running at around 515 uh, and that's what actually takes off the pressure off the flash tank and actually creates that liquid in that flash tank. So, I mean, like I said, it's, it's awesome to see that, that you guys are being innovative and, and coming up with, with things that are in need for, for, you know, for the industry. So that's a really good point. And, you know, this is being our gas cooler valve. We've also seen this be employed as an expansion valve on larger industrial mm -hmm. systems. Uh, you know, it, it is a, a large valve and we are looking at smaller capacities for that gas cooler valve. The GC10 is our smallest, but we're looking at uh, being able to go down lower than that. And there are some manufacturers that actually employ hot gas defrost in CO2. And in order to accomplish that, uh, they don't really typically have an auxiliary side port connector. They basically backfeed it through the expansion valve and having that wide capacity. Because at that point, you're basically creating liquid and then being able to flow through that valve. Where typically in a hot gas commercial system, like you're typically used to in a supermarket, you would basically have a bypass line around, where in this instance, they can just open it all the way up and use that to flow that liquid back up to the liquid header for that system.